What I have so far are five slices of bacon that I cut into big pieces and I'm going to saute them off in this large pan. I boiled off five eggs, hard boiled eggs. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them yet, if they're for salad or just snacking. I've washed a pound of cranberries and back here I have one cup of sugar, one cup of water and I'm just following the directions on the bag uh, to bring the water and sugar to the boil and then to add the cranberries. And over here I have a red cabbage that I'm going to slice up and that's going to be going into the skillet where the bacon is. Okay, the cranberries have come to a nice boil. I am now taking the bacon out of the skillet and I'm going to add the onions and sugar, vinegar, a little bit more oil because I'm rendering some of the fat to saute this cabbage in. Uh, let me see. Oh, and I have some caraway seeds here. But first I'm going to take the bacon out. Okay, I'm going to put the onions in and I know it's hissing rather loudly. Just saute them for 30 seconds or so. And don't worry about this brown stuff on the bottom of the skillet, that's actually flavor. And because the uh, cabbage takes such a long time to saute, all of that's going to be picked up and become part of the flavor of the uh, cabbage. Smells good. Nothing like the smell of onion and bacon, is there? Okay, so I'm going to try to do some of this with one hand. Red cabbage takes a long time to become nice and tender, and this is how I learned to do it at home. I know there's uh, probably dozens of other ways to do it, but this is how I was taught by just watching my mother. Okay, let me see if I can get the rest of it to slide off without sliding all over the place. This head of cabbage was about one pound seven ounces, and it seems like a lot, but you know how cabbage is. It will wilt down to about a third of this. Okay, so I'm going to add about, I've got about a third of a cup of sugar here. You see, I think I'll reserve a spoon of it and just see how it tastes. And, uh, let me see, I didn't loosen the cap on this vinegar bottle. I've got about a third of a cup of vinegar here. And you do this to taste. You make this as sweet and, and tart as you like. All right, I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of caraway seeds over the top. And again, this was how um, my mom did it. And this is how I grew up liking it. So I'm going to stir all these things together and then just let it saute and simmer for however long it takes. Um, for the cabbage to be tender. I've got to give the cranberries a nice stir and they've got about eight minutes left to boil. Okay, let me see how the cabbage is coming along. Whoo, that is hot. Okay, yeah, it's got quite a ways to go yet. I got exactly two 12 ounce jars of the cranberry sauce. I'm going to chill it, uh, I cool it, I mean, and then I'll put it in the refrigerator. I'm not canning it because this is going to get used up before it'll ever go bad. Okay, the red cabbage is done cooking, and now the final step is to pour in a little slurry of cold water and cornstarch. And I like to do that because it makes a nice glaze for the cabbage. And it doesn't take long. You just pour it in and stir it around, and before you know it, the cornstarch turns clear. At this point, you can eat the cabbage, or you can just cool it and put it in the refrigerator for the next day, but this really freezes well. I have uh, frozen extras and just reheat them in the microwave and it tastes absolutely wonderful. So don't be afraid to make extra. Okay, and that is the sweet and sour red cabbage. That's a traditional dish for our holidays, um, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Well, I would say that today was pretty productive. I got the red cabbage done. 
I'm just going to cover it with foil and refrigerate it. I also got two jars of cranberry sauce done and I like the whole berry. And then I made a box of rice aroni uh, long grain and wild rice for a curry that I'm going to make tomorrow. I've got some diced white onion here, some green onion. These are diced uh, dried apricots. Here's a mixture of cranberries, cherries, and uh, golden raisins. And then I lightly toasted some almond slices. And it doesn't matter if the uh, aroma cross over with one another because it's all going to go into the same dish. So all of this is going to go into the refrigerator and it will be ready for when I start cooking the big meal. Hmm, I just pulled out the pumpkin pie and it smells really good and I think it looks pretty. I popped in a sweet potato and the small casserole dish of green beans with mushroom soup and onions and everything, the green bean casserole. So that should be ready in a little while. <clears throat> and then later on I'm going to put in the uh, turkey thighs to bake. Okay friends, just because I'm alone today doesn't mean I don't want to have a little bit of a turkey dinner. So what I've got going here, I cooked this yesterday. This is the long grain and wild rice and I chopped some green onions and white onions some dried um, apricots, here's a little bit of that mixed dried fruit, and I toasted a little bit of almond slices. I've got my pumpkin pie done. I'm going to be using some boxed stuffing, but just to kind of dress it up a little bit, I'm sauteing some celery and onion with butter and a little bit of poultry seasoning. I've got some more green onions cut here for garnish. Uh, I might do a beef dip, I'm not sure at this time and over here in the skillet I'm sauteing some celery and diced apple and that's going to go with the wild rice and all these other ingredients and in the oven I have a sweet potato and a small uh, green bean casserole and right there I just put the turkey thighs in so that's what's going on in my kitchen and it's about two o'clock in the afternoon I just added the onion to the apple and celery. Saute it just a little bit. I'm going to put just a little sprinkle of curry on here right now. I'll probably add more once I add the rice. But just a little bit to get it started. And then this is uh, turmeric. How do you say it? Turmeric or turmeric? Anyway, a little bit of that. They're very close in flavor, but I like to use both of them sometimes. Mm, that smells so good. If you like uh, Indian food, they use a lot of that. I'm not too crazy about ginger. Okay, next I'll be adding the rice. Okay, up. I like making a lot of this because it freezes really well. Okay, so I have to let that warm up and saute for just a little bit. Okay, time to get out the green bean casserole. I just added a handful of frozen peas, a little bit more of the turmeric and the curry powder, and then now these are the dried fruits. I think this dish is so beautiful. I love the colors in it. And then at the end I have some um, toasted almond slices that I'm going to stir in there too. Isn't this pretty? with the cranberries and the dried cherries and the golden raisins and that beautiful yellow color from the from the seasonings. And here it is all done. Long grain and wild rice with all kinds of dried fruits topped with some sliced uh, almonds, 
and a little bit of green onion and black pepper. It is one of my favorite new side dishes for the holidays. Time to check the turkey thighs. I just brought the pot out of the oven. I put some apple chunks and onion under the skin on both of them, so if that looks a little bit odd, <laughs> that's why. Okay, oh, it's definitely done. Yeah, definitely done. Okay, I'm going to take this out and <clears throat> skim some of the apple and the onion out of here and make some gravy now. All right, guys, it's time for dinner. In the middle, I have some red cabbage. Here's cranberry sauce. This is dark meat turkey. Here is some of that long grain and wild rice uh, stir fry that I love so much. Green bean casserole, mashed potatoes and gravy, and I think there's some stuffing. Yes. So anyway, thank you so much for spending time with me. I hope you guys had a wonderful Thanksgiving, and I will see you soon.